Former Senate President Iyotia Ayu takes the win as the new national PDP chairman and candidate supported by the party's governor's win positions in the National Working Committee. Plus, Governor Nyesong Wiki of River State gives the federal government 48 hours to probe the raid on Justice Miri Odili's residence. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The newly elected national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Iyotia Ayu, says the party, if elected in 2023, will develop Nigeria as it did when it was in power for 16 years. Ayu, who was the consensus candidate at the party's 2021 national convention in Abuja, uh, he spoke about the convention and it seems the so-called bigwigs have lost their grip on the party as the selections of the party's governors won places in the National Working Committee of the party. For instance, Taufik Arakbaja, a former deputy governor of Oyo State, who was supported by the governors, beat Olagun Soye Unilola, who had been supported by the likes of Atiku Saraki and Lamido, barely for the position of the deputy national chairman, South. And worthy of mention is the absence of the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, who has been rumoured to be planning to join the All Progressive Congress APC. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Vinashas E. Kame. He is Cross River State People's Democratic Party chairman and Opunabo Inko Tara, former special advisor on media and publicity to the governor of River State, Nyesamwike. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Great. I'm going to start Thank with you. you. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Ekem. It's very interesting. Um, like I mentioned in my intro, um, there are so many um, um, people at the convention. Of course, the known names and the big wigs, uh, the leaders of the party, were all in attendance. Um, but what you have note uh, is that the former uh, president, um, Goodluck Jonathan, was conspicuously absent. Now, many have said that um, um, you know. The rumors of the president, former president, leaving the party might just be cemented by his absence at the national convention of the party. What's your take on this? Mr. Ekem, that question is for you. I, I don't think that Mr. Ekem can hear us, so I'm going to throw that question to Opunabo. Go ahead, Opunabo. I'm sure you heard my question. Oh, yes, I did. Your, I think the question centers on why uh, President Goodluck Jonathan did not attend the convention, is it? Yes. Well, uh, the good reason for his uh, absence, they said he already had a scheduled uh, appointment in Nairobi. Um, so it's in the realm of speculation. Of course, you will agree with me that when there is an information void, uh, there is a possibility of speculations and all kinds of interpretations. So we we'll wait for good luck, Jonathan, to at least uh, let the world know if the defection and that is one rumor that I've been writing in the air is defection to APC based on the overshot or, or supposed overshot from the APC. Uh, I think uh, for now I will not want to weave any interpretation into his answers because he already had an appointment in Nairobi and uh, probably he's going to play a key role in that assignment. And so he just couldn't compromise that. I don't want to believe that President Goodluck Jonathan would prefer to the APT. But it is his choice, types of his own position. It's politics, and politics is all about interest. They say in politics, there is no permanent friend, no, no permanent enemy, but permanent interest. So it's all about interest. But I, for now, still doubt that, although the air is so filled with the news of its likely deception to the APC. Many have, um, many 
party faithfuls have called the act of the former president not showing up at the convention as a convenient excuse um, to stay away from the convention. In fact, many have gone farther to say that um, leaders of the party had paid him a visit previously before the party's convention, um, persuading him to be part of the event and then leave, even if it meant to give a, a few words before he departed to Kenya, but that he refused. Um, and this, and they, they continuously say that this might mean that there is trouble in paradise. Will the PDP be missing anything if, for example, um, the rumors were true and the president, the former president, might just be moving to the APC, but subtly? Well, uh, the truth of it is that uh, whether we like it or not, as a former governor of Barrio the former deputy governor, the president, he has a lot of uh, sympathy and definitely full of action. But the, and again, politics is all about perception. A lot of people defecting from one party to the other, uh, they, 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 they contemporize it, not necessarily because of the clout of the individuals or because of the, the followership, but it, it really has to do with perception. If Mr. A, for example, most House of, House of Rest members that are defecting really don't have that perception. They don't have the numerical strength. But it is in the eyes of the public, if a man of this stature would defect from this party to this other party, then the common man will say, then this is going to be the winning party. Why do you have a lot of people defecting to this party? Why not go to that party? So that is all about psychology. But the truth is, if Good Luck Jonathan, a man of Good Luck Jonathan standing, should defect from PDP to APC, apart from the, uh, uh, the number of people that are going to go with him, I can assure you that it's going to rub off negatively on the PDP because of perception. A lot of people will conclude that the PDP probably might not win the next uh, presidential election, and that is why Good Luck Jonathan defected it. And this will make a lot of people to also start scrambling the members of the PDP. So it's all about perception. And perception in politics is key, is crucial. Okay. Um Joining us on the phone is uh, the state chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Benashas Ikem. I don't know if you can hear me now, Mr. Ikem. Can you hear me? Mr. Ikem, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Well, Opanabo Inkotaria here is saying that, um, he, he's saying that if, if the former president, good luck, Jonathan, uh, were to leave the party, um, a lot of people might think that um, the party may not be able to win come 2023. Does the party um, really, um, would the party lose anything if the former president were to leave the uh, PDP today, bearing in mind that there have been speculations as to the fact that he did not show up um, for the party's convention, even though he had, um, you know, an event to attend in Kenya? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I I know that um, the optics for the former president's uh, presence at the convention would have been quite significant. Go ahead, we can hear you. Uh, Ms. E. Kim, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, yes, go ahead. We're trying to, we want to hear your position. If you think that if he left the party, um, the party would be losing a big fish in any way. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was trying to say that the optics for his presence at the convention could have been positive for the party. But uh, nothing can be further from the truth to say that uh, if you left the party today, uh, the PT would automatically lose the 2023 elections. Uh, as former president, his contributions are critical. Uh, like we say in politics, perception uh, plays a significant role in what we do, but perception is not everything. Um, Bielsa is a PDP state, 
But we also know that Bayelsa is one of the small states in this country. We know that we need every vote, but I'm not aware that the Bayelsa so critical to any national election as far as I'm concerned. And I also do not know that the former president hopes entirely the same threat of Bayelsa state. Having said that, like I said before, uh, for optics, for the significance of his uh, position as former president, uh, would rather he remains in the party than he leaves the party. But so, nobody, so you're limiting, nobody, so you're nobody, limiting the position of the former president to just optics. You're also limiting it to no, just Bielsa state. <laughs> Is that not, what you're implying? That he might not necessarily, to, when it comes to, to putting weight, optics. he might not have that but much what weight. what I do know, is that the determination of the people of the South-South, including by Elsa State, would be beyond the former president's uh, say-so. Uh, I say so from very informed um, uh, reality of what is going on in the South-South. And I know that we could win elections in by Elsa State in the South-South despite his position, one way or the other. But again, I think that his remaining in the party would play a significant role in our winning. Openaba, I'm, toss I'm tossing this back to you. Do you necessarily agree with him in terms of the optics, how, how he put it? Uh, he's also saying that he's certain that the PDP would win elections in Bayelsa State, whether the former president is within the party or not. Um, but that him leaving the party might not necessarily change uh, anything uh, in, in the life of the party. Well, uh, the truth, like I told you, politics is all about perception. And you cannot rule out uh, good luck, Jonathan, good luck, Jonathan's clout and influence uh, in bias of speech and even beyond. They might not have the kind of clout that the likes of uh, Atiku and Saraki may have, but the truth is you just can't dismiss it. That's the truth about it. I haven't said this. Uh, bias are yes. It's today a PDP state because the court said so. Otherwise, Bayelsa would have been an APC state. That's one fact that we should not forget. We must not be oblivious of that fact. But for the court, Bayelsa was already an APC state. So it's all about perception with my brother and cross that also agreed on. That the depression of good luck, Jonathan, from PDP to APC, like I said, they might not have the clouds of the articles and the salaries and what have you, but that will definitely impact negatively on the uh, PDP in terms of perception. And like I said earlier, uh, if, for example, you ordinary would have had 10,000 persons voting for the PDP, the defection of good luck, Jonathan, might reduce the number to about 6,000 or 7,000 persons. Because the impression will be, the interpretation a lot of people will be doing, is that a man like Goodluck Jonathan, who was the president on the ticket of the PDP to defect, it simply means he knows what majority of Nigerians know. And so that might be the winning party. Or that might be a party that will retain uh, power from 2023. So it's all about perception. But that does not in any way negate the fact that his defection might, will, will automatically, let me put it that way, signal the failure of PDP. That's not what I'm talking about. But it okay. will definitely impact uh, the PDP negatively. All right, let's move away from that. Um, coming back to you, Vinashes. Um it looked like the governors, um, you know, had the day. They seemed to have had the upper hand in terms of um, those they supported um, making making up the members of the National Working Committee. Um, they seemed to, according to a lot of reports that were coming out on the national dailies, to be the stars of the day. Um, they, they, uh, we saw the likes of the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, former Senate President, former Jigawa State Governors, seemingly having a foretaste of what might be happening come, um, you know, 2023 in terms of who's going to fly the flag of the party. Um, do you see as a state party chairman 
uh, that maybe the governors might be the determinants of who would emerge as president? To tell you the truth, I, I could barely hear what you have said. You so know, I'll so ask I, the question I, again. I'll ask it again. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. So I'm saying that the governors of the different states, the governors under the People's Democratic Party, seem to have been the stars at the national convention, being that their members, or rather the people that they supported, emerged in the National Working Committee. So I'm, I'm saying, does this mean that the, the likes of the former vice president, the former Senate president, and the former Jigawa state governor are getting a foretaste of what will happen when it comes to picking who will fly the flag for the PDP presidential ticket? Well, if I, if I, if, if I, if I, I understand you talking okay, about the powers of the governors uh, and all that, I can only say that that is not even a new thing, neither is it uh, limited to Nigeria. Governors control significant political control within the areas of their uh, their, their, their governance, if you like, or their states. Now, back even in the uh, 2023 uh, second term election of uh, President Obasanjo, I'm sure you must, if you, your memory, if, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you, your history of politics goes uh, that way back, you recall the role the governors played in almost cutting the sitting the president's time. ambition. Yes. To go back for a second term. Yeah. That continued to the uh, uh, Yaradwa's emergence, led Yaradwa's emergence as president, and good luck Jonathan's emergence as vice president. It has been, it has been like that. So there is nothing untoward about the role the governors play, and the fact that when they come together, they usually would be the most influential segment of the party in any policy. You take that even to the U.S. and everywhere else, it remains the same. So what is happening is that where the major stakeholders, because the governors are the major stakeholders of the party, when they take a position, it is only fair and natural that the rest of the party will move in that direction. Because they are like the field commanders of the party in the various states, which are the federating units of the country. So it's a natural thing to happen. So there's nothing unusual about it. Uh, if I understood your question, that's what I can say about that. All right. Um, let's move away from that. Um, to you, Oponabo, what do you have note is uh, in the convention is a young man who emerged as the um, youth leader for the party, as opposed to 50-year-olds who normally were youth leaders in the PDP. Uh, many have applauded this, uh, saying that going forward, maybe a, a lot more things would change within the party. Uh, does that also, one way or the other, give a, a, an, an additional plus mark to the PDP in terms of getting more people involved within their party come 2023? Well, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, it's something that should be encouraged, uh, although we still believe that it shouldn't have been restricted to just the national leader, I think so. It's like giving a woman uh, national, uh, national women leader or something. Of course, you're not going to make a man <coughs> excuse me, a national women leader. You're going to give it to a woman. So I think, yes, it's a step in the right direction. As against when you have adults, adults, you know, uh, shamefully describing themselves as youth just for pecking every game. That was quite shameful and embarrassing. So... I commend the PDP that today you really have a youth as national leader of the youth in the PDP. Uh, having, having said that, I think they should not just be restricted to that portfolio alone. Uh, they should have been given order, even if it's not, uh, let's say, the principal, the party. They could have been given deputy positions. But let us appreciate what they have done, what the PDP has done thus far. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Ikem, I think that I think that you are talking, but we can't hear you. Uh, Mr. Ikem, I'm going to throw the same question to you. I, I'd like for you to start again because I could hear you, but we couldn't hear you very well. No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So I, I heard. Hello? You. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I should go on. Yes, we couldn't hear yeah, you I, at all. I was I was talking about the significance of um, 
the youth leaders emerges on the scene. Yes. As a young man, as a fresh face, as the future of the party that we look look up to. Because for many of us, we're a generation that's fast fading. And so when you begin to see a replacement generation coming up, gutsy and uh, articulate, you don't even have any choice than to support. So for, for many of us, we simply supported even when we had not met him, because we liked what we were seeing, that the party, our party has a future in the young generation of politicians coming up. I heard you say something about coming to Cross River State. Well, we also know that... Um... Yeah, I said I did extend invitations to him to come to Cross River State so that we can mobilize young men around him so that they can see what is possible, the, what can be possible in the PDP moving forward. But there, there seems to be a lot more young people, I, I might be wrong, in, in, you know, participating in politics in, in Cross River, or, or is that not necessarily the case? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I think I didn't get that right. I was asking that, are there not more young people participating in politics in Cross River, or am I mistaken? Oh, there are very many, there are very many. And I think that if we could present the person of the current national youth leader of the party to the people of Cross River State, to young people in Cross River State. It will make a whole difference to them. I can say this. By 1998, when PDP was being formed, many children who were being born that year, and even a few years later, are eligible voters now. Indeed, like he said in his video, he's only two years older than the PDP. So you can see the significance of that. Because many of these children have never seen a military regime. Their whole orientation is a global orientation, which has no military inclusion in it. And so if you can see one of them promoted to the level of the, I mean, to national politics, it should galvanize their support around the party. That's why I say that's the new face of PDP moving forward. Okay. Um, Mr. In Inkotaria, this question is for you. Quickly, uh, we all know and have watched what's happened between the um, chairman, the national uh, chairman of your party, the court, um, uh, and of course the party leaders. We already saw, you know, members of the National Working Committee, the previous National Working Committee, move to the APC, and all of the imbroglio that's been going on. Now that the convention has come and gone. What next should we be looking forward to uh, within the party? Let's not forget that there are other pending issues within the party. And then the PDP? Mr. Tyra, can you hear me? Then the PDP? Yes. I mean, Ryan, you, you probably have forgotten that I'm not a member of APC. I'm not a member of PDP, so I wouldn't know. Well, I'm saying that this is public. It's public knowledge. Uh, just before Friday, yes. um, the case was in court. Um, Mr. Secundus had said that um, he was not going to, um, he was going to stay and wait until the court pronounces, you know, judgment on that issue. But then, of course, the judgment came on Friday and the PDP was allowed to go ahead with the National Convention. So I'm asking, again, going forward with all of the issues within the PDP, what does the future hold for the party? Well, um, like I always say, conflict is a function of interaction. And because man cannot not communicate, man is prone to it. The resolution is what matters. That is what is key. Even in heaven, there was conflict. So, having said this, Prince Secundus, I am, it is sad to note that Prince Secundus. Uh, uh, just uh, embarking on what I refer to as academic exercise because the court will never, ever nullify a convention. First and foremost, uh, as at when the convention was held, there, were, there was no, no court case. PDP won on Friday, and on Saturday and Sunday, they had their convention. So, as a second time, would have appealed, if he had, would have gone to the Supreme Court either today or maybe tomorrow. So, uh, I don't see the Supreme Court at all. It's going to be a, a tall order, a little illusion to think that the Supreme Court is going to nullify it. But it's going to be an academic exercise in the sense that uh, those that will come out as the country, probably Yorker, IU, and Co., 
might be the beneficiary of the judgment of the Supreme Court. I don't see Prince Uche Second being the beneficiary. He's probably just a part finder. Okay. That's the way I look at it. So the NWC let these persons that are just elected will be in office for another four years if the governors and other principal actors will allow them to be, if after two or three years they will not orchestrate the exit. Hmm. Because what really happens is that whenever these leaders are at long ahead or these leaders uh, uh, dissent, have a, have a have divergent view with the, from the governor, then the governors will now use their powers to ensure they frustrate and eventually remove the leader of the office. That is what happens. Not necessarily in the interest of the party. Most of these battles are uh, egocentric battles. They are, they, are, they are not necessarily in the interest of the party. They are in the interest of the person, the dramatic person, those involved in the struggle. That is the truth about Okay. Uh, Mr. Ekem, can you hear me? Because I want to ask about the PDP in Cross River. Um, we all watched as the, yes, we all watched as the governor uh, of, of your state moved to the APC and, of course, did not just do that. He took the whole structure of your party, took the party secretariat also over and painted it in colors of the APC. Um, and we saw the two former governors, including uh, former governor Donald Duke, who officially had left the PDP, come back into the party in a bid to rescue the party. So I'd like to ask you, where's the PDP in Cross River States now as we speak? Um, what are your structures like? Have you been able to put your house in order? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, what's happening in Cross River State will become a case study for the opposition in, in, in several other states. Our house, to say the least, is perfectly in order. Uh, our new, new West senator, the senator representing Cross River North, which is, uh, Governor Yade's senatorial district and mine, um, he just had a reception at Uguja over the weekend. And, um, the turnout was something that became known by everyone as a carnival. And uh, it was almost something you can compare to the national convention that just happened. And the message went out very strong that despite the governor's presence from the north, the north of Cross River State, we are on face absolutely because the party is growing in bounds and leaps in Cross River North. Many people who were in APC are returning. Indeed, on that occasion, we received over 5,000 decampees, even though it was merely a church uh, Thanksgiving service. And many more people since then have been reaching out to us to go and receive them. So for us, I can say in summary, that our structures are intact, our structures are growing stronger, and uh, we look forward to a lot of So you're telling me that one senator moving to the PDP is what determines that your structures are in good place or in a good place? Is that what you're saying? Because if I remember, the deputy, former deputy governor has been chairing um, the committee the, that is in charge of the party. Have you, now that you have um, new party leaders, I know that you also emerged as the, um, you know, the party chairman, uh, what is the roadmap? Because, of course, 2023 is supposed to be what the vision is for every political party. And, in, and Cross River has never been, you know, in opposition uh, when it comes to the PDP. The PDP has always led, the, you know, the state. But now you are playing the opposition. So what is the plan? Well, we have our plans. I'm not sure our plans are for national television or the networks. But suffice it to say, that, like you said, our... Uh, our preparedness for 2023 are completely in total, um, had, 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 for lack of what to say, we, 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 are, we, are, we would rather pretend that the government is not there. And that's what is happening in the North. People are doing what they're doing, declaring their interest, showing their support, despite him. So for us, his being there is not affecting our mobilization not in the north of Cross River where it comes from, nor anywhere else in Cross River State. The, the reality remains that the governor has failed, and everybody knows it, 
beginning from his hometown to every part of the state. So we are looking beyond where the governor comes from. We're looking at the two parties, comparing the performance, like you said, of the previous two governors with what he has done, which has basically been destroying almost everything that we, other administrations had, had been able to accomplish. So we look forward to rebuilding the state, absolutely. And when you talk about rescuing Nigeria, we talk more about rescuing Cross River State back, back home. That's where we are. All right. Well, Vanessa Zikame is the... Um Chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Rivers, uh, in Cross River State, I beg your pardon, and Upunabo Inko Tara is a former special advisor to the governor of River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Marianne. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take a quick break. Thank you all for staying with us on Plus Politics. We will be talking about another judge in River State being attacked, this time in Abuja. Stay with us. <laughs>